I have a sneak peek of Spendo Repair for you today with my friends at GTI Technology here in New Hampshire, the headquarters, my friends Tom and Ray. As you can see, we have a Makino spindle broken down right here. You might not even recognize that to be a Makino spindle because we know that is one of the top of the line spindles out there. And that's why Ray is going to go into some of those details and significance of what they do here at GTI and how they can help you do it on your own as well. Incredible? Yeah, I think so too. So Tom, Ray, thank you so much. I'm excited to learn about what you guys do and how these guys can implement it in their shops as well. Thanks, uh, Tony. and Thank you for coming here. This is my partner, Ray Sainange. Uh, we started doing this from many, many years ago. Um, and that's what we're here to is give you a sneak peek into just a few key elements of what makes spindle repair uh, special over any other rotating repairs that you might uh, see out there, motor repair, ball screw repair, gearbox repair, things of that nature. We're going to uh, give you a sneak peek and let you know that, you know, this is something that we can bring to your door. Uh, we have trained some of the big three uh, of exactly going into their lab, showing them best practices for uh, spindle repair, and we're going to give you a couple of those cues here today. Uh, so I'm going to start out with a few of those is when a bearing locks up, a spindle seizes, or it locks up in, in the typical spindle failure, it wears away material and damages and bends and, and unstraightens that uh, shaft or housing that we have to bring back to a micron or less run out and size geometry. And Ray, why don't you explain what we do to make that, you know, what, what, what do we do to make that happen? So what we do is we grind the spindle shaft down to, to make it straight, but then the shaft is obviously small. We then chrome plate it to bring it back up in size and then regrind it back down to OEM tolerances or better. Yep, and we can do that on ID housing bores, ID tapers. And one of the beauties of that is, you know, typically the hardness of a shaft or housing is somewhere around 60 Rockwell. Actually, a lot of them are more in the 50 to 55 rock well. Okay, well, after hard chrome plating is resurfaced, that surface bec becomes not only straight, perfect, parallel, and round, and perfect size, it's now 72 rock well. So you can imagine the wear resistance of those components that are reworked can be even better. Um, you know, some of the other uh, pointers that we do during our training is proper balancing of not only the components, but how to trim balance at speed. Uh, some of the other things um, is, you know, how to measure run out and change run out. You know, run out is something that can be altered even after it's chrome plated. Maybe you want to explain and expound on that. Correct. Just in the way you're tightening the nuts and assembling the spindle, you could have a perfectly straight shaft. And if you do not assemble it correctly, you can warp or twist the shaft so you need to know how to tighten the nuts properly so that your shaft remains straight. Yeah, and there, there's a lot, of, a lot of tribal tricks to all those things that we're talking about. So, you know, uh, again, it's something we want to emphasize here at GTI. This is a Makino uh, V22. Uh, it sort of has a special lubricate. You know, every spindle brand is special and has their own niches, but this particular one has a lubrication system that actually recirculates itself and refrigerates itself and why do they do that ray maybe you could explain that so what they're trying to achieve is that the whole machine stays at the same temperature so they run the lubrication through the shaft through the bearings they also run it through the lead screws the machine base so as it warms up the machine grows as a whole yeah um, and it just makes a better product at the end of the day. Yeah, nothing grows and moves around so that uh, you're able to get a more precise parts from the CNC machine tool. So, um, you know, that's kind of what we're promoting here. Um, and we'd love to teach you how to do it and walk you through all the paces. Now, Tom, when I'm listening to you guys describe the ability to do it on your own, and we have a Makino spindle out here, and we think of a, super a superior spindle in this way, and there's a lot of those guys out there, and then there's some that you know are a bit more basic and easy to repair, but you have one of the more complex ones out there. To build confidence with the audence, I'm sure, to let them yeah. know, we can do it, we'll educate you on how you can do it, right? So all of this exists. 
what size shops, if I'm listening to this video right now and I'm listening to you guys talk, if I own one machine, is it five machines, ten machines, is it large shops, is it medium shops? Who all should dive into the possibility of doing this? Should everyone be educated on how to do this? Maybe even especially a small shop who doesn't want to send it out and work on something. Where do we sit when it comes to that? Sure, excellent question. Um, most of the people that are, you know, have 30, 40 machine tools, probably not practical to pull somebody and train somebody and have a small spindle room off to the side. But when you're looking at a uh, powertrain plant, uh, your Boeing, some of the big companies that are running 500 thousands of machines, and, and a lot of times all of the same type. You know, there are some places that have 40,000 uh, robo drills under one roof. Well, in that case, better have your own spindle lab, otherwise you're going to be exhausting 10 vendors of our size, not just one. So that, that's kind of where you lean into that. But you know what, there's not a lot of people prepared to teach people that. You know, we've done the manuals, we've used our 25 years of experience of the variety of spindles that we do uh, to put everything in manual format, to be able to train people how to do it right. And since we've developed our, a lot of our own instrumentation for vibration and balancing and things we've shown in some of the other videos you've done for us, um, it enables us to get a step closer to being able to do that for people. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm sure the people watching are grateful. As a leader in the industry for spindle repair, doing it 1997 and beyond, you guys make a great friendship and partnership. Excellent technology as I'm walking around your facility as well, so thank you for doing that. If someone is now excited, I know you have a lot of partners out there already who are implementing this system with you guys, but if someone is excited and wants to learn more, how can they find out more about you? Sure, they can reach out to us at www dot gti spindle dot com or they can reach out to our direct number at 603-669-5993. And just out of curiosity, do you offer tours of your facility for someone who wants to come through and learn more about your locations? Absolutely, and that, that, that's another thing that reminds me to bring up. Not only are we going to teach you how to rebuild your own spindle or if you use us as a spindle repair, we'll also teach you Another important thing here at GTI is it's not that you're, you know, if your spindle breaks, they break for a reason. And it's very important that you understand why it failed. And we will teach you those post-mortem tricks on being able to know, you know, was it contamination? Do we need to improve the front end of the spindle to make it last longer? Um, is it lubrication induced? And the, the machine had a failure. Uh, where the lubricator shut off and the next spindle you put in it is going to fail again if you don't know about it. So conveying that information and showing you how to do proper post-mortems to know exactly what caused the machine or the spindle to fail is super important. You know, if you have an electrical problem, it's going to kill another spindle. If you've got an operator issue, a coolant issue, any of those issues all can be identified by what we see on the inside of the spindle when we take it apart. I think you'd agree. I agree a hundred percent. You can see, you know, tool changer arms that are not aligned up, uh, spindle crashes. We can see all that here and feed that back to you. And Ray, correct me if I'm wrong, but knowing you guys for a while now, walking around this shop, learning everything that I'm learning from you guys, you kind of are like this one-stop shop saying, we're going to educate you. We can do it for you. We have the software to help you learn. I mean, everything all in between when it comes to spindles, you guys are a leader in this industry and willing to share that knowledge with others. Absolutely we are and, and it helps you get more product out the door because we could potentially stop a problem from continuing to happen that you might not even know you have. And that all comes with our experience. From the outside looking in, I think a lot of our industry holds their cards close to their chest and someone like yourself would say, I'm not going to teach others because I make all my money on spindle repairs. But you guys realize that preventive maintenance also benefits everyone in the industry, creates closer relationships and allows everyone to create their own success. And if you're empowering them to do that, we're all going to have this relationship where we all succeed. Would you value that as well? Am I seeing this correctly? I, I think that's an awesome question. And the reason why is we, we struggled with that in the beginning. You know, should we release out our tricks and how we do things and things of that nature? Um, and when we put our toe in the water and started working with people doing their own spindles, it built more business, more trust. So now when somebody has a spindle that they can't do, or it may be over their head, or maybe they're just doing bearing changes and we get the harder ones that need to be resurfaced and things, it still ended up being a, 
a, a net positive in more business with those companies. So it's an excellent question, but it definitely worked out for GTI. Well, guys, gals out there, I've been into those shops with 40,000, 50,000 machines in one spot. Just last week, I was at a place with over 150 machines. This just makes sense. Be able to do this in-house, the larger facilities, maybe even the medium-sized facilities. But as Tom said, pay attention to what works best for you. But if you're looking for this type of capability within your facility, complete spindle service, educate yourself. GTI Spindles, a real leader and a real gift for anyone out there who's ready to learn. Guys, thank you so much for sharing your decades of wisdom. And thanks for coming, Tony. Thank you, Tony.